Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm very excited because I'm going to be discussing how to become an anesthesiologist. Now I know this video may not apply to most of you, but I really am making this video, and if you're interested and just cur you're curious how people become anesthesiologists in general, um, this is, you know, something, a video you might, you might enjoy watching, and I hope you will. Also, I just wanted to put out a video out there because this is one of my most common questions that I get, like, DM'd or asked in comments on YouTube or on comments on my Instagram, and I feel bad because I can't answer them all because it would be better suited to a video like this. It just takes time and it takes, it, it's more than just a one word answer, you know what I mean? So I'm making this for you guys who've been out there, aspiring students, high schoolers who've been emailing me, middle schoolers even who have been emailing me, and college age students. So I, I'm making this video for you guys, but of course if this doesn't apply to you, I invite you to still watch because I really appreciate your support and your viewership of this channel and this video, and I also appreciate the support of today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Whenever you are embarking on a journey to do something, it really, really helps for you to educate yourself on the journey you're about to embark on. That's part of the reason why I'm making this video for students, but also part of the reason why Skillshare is so helpful. So as you guys know, I am starting my own scrub line, and I have been relying or uh, leaning into Skillshare to help me on my path to starting a business. Now, I do own a business, this is my business, this is a business I've owned for 11 years, but it's a little different when you're starting with like making a corporation and you're going out on your own, you're making a business plan, you wanna raise capital, things like that. So this course that I've been watching on Skillshare has been super instrumental in helping me kind of guide guide my creative you know this creative download that i have and this creative flurry and like channel it into okay let's put this into a manageable business and the course that i've really enjoyed watching is called art of the start turning ideas into high growth businesses and it's it's a masterclass led by two very skilled, highly um, experienced entrepreneurs who have worked for Apple, who have worked for Canva, a popular um, app on your phone that you probably have on your phone right now, especially if you're into social media. So yeah, it's just a course that I've really enjoyed watching and there are so many other classes out there on Skillshare. So for less than the cup of, a, of an average coffee at Starbucks per month, you can have unlimited access to premium content like the course I'm watching. And if you are one of the first 1,000 people to sign up using my link in the description box below, you will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. And after that, it's only around $10 a month. So in today's quarantine age, whether you're looking to fend off boredom, feed your creativity, or learn a new skill, Skillshare is the place to get your learn on. So make sure that if you're one of the first 1,000 people to click the link in my description box, you'll get a free trial of Skillshare Premium, and then after that it's only $10 a month. So try it on for size, see how you like it. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. So let's get into how I became an anesthesiologist. And I'm not gonna speak specifically about how, how I did it because I think it's more useful to say like, okay, what do you need to do? So you're a student, maybe you're in middle school, maybe you're in high school, maybe you're in college, and people will say, oh, they ask me these questions like, what, what, what do I need to study? What do I need to major in? What do I need to do to make sure that I can have my best chance of succeeding and getting into medical school and getting into an anesthesi anesthesiology residency? Well. The thing is, you just need to do what makes you happy. So it really doesn't matter what you major in in college. And as a matter of fact, it actually kind of makes you stand out if you don't do, if you don't major in what everybody else majors in. I would still caution that you still need to take your pre-med requirements. And maybe if you're a non-science major like I was, take, if you have the time, some extra classes that are not required that are still kind of biology, chemistry, biomedical sciences based. That will give you a really nice foundation so that you're not, you know, starting from behind as some of these biomedical sciences majors are. Um, maybe kind of like they're just kind of in, they're kind of in deep into the bi biomedical sciences and you may not be, but it will make you a more well-rounded individual if you major in something that isn't biomedical sciences. So my major was psychology, just on a personal note, and I had enough uh, biology 
so, uh, science courses to minor in biology and I also minored in Spanish. So you can do whatever you want. You can major in chemistry if you want or biochemical engineering. It doesn't matter, okay? But what matters is that you enjoy what you're doing. Don't burn yourself out. Make great grades. Study, figure out how to study now is yours truly didn't figure out how to truly study until medical school because I just kind of floated along like everybody else and I was a great test taker and I didn't learn how to really study and absorb large amounts of information until medical school. And now let's get into what you're gonna need to do. You're gonna need to look up the pre-medicine or pre-medical requirements for entry into medical school and you're gonna wanna do that probably within your freshman year especially if you're dead set on, on getting into medical school because you want to start taking some of those courses now and spread it out over four years so you don't overwhelm yourself like I did in the last two years of college. So you're going to want to take those courses. Once you have enough of those courses under your belt and you want to make sure you get organic chemistry under your belt, you're going to want, because I made that mistake, I started studying for the MCAT and I just didn't understand what all of this organic chemistry questions were coming from and I realized it's just because I was taking my courses so late and in the last two years of my college career that I hadn't taken organic chemistry yet and I was studying for it on the MCAT and I was like whoa whoa what is this I just left my Kaplan MCAT course in the middle of the first I guess the first one or two like course I was like sitting there in the class I was like I have no idea what's going on so just make sure you've got enough of your pre-med requirement and courses under your belt before you start studying for the MCAT usually I think junior or sen junior or senior year. Don't quote me on that, because I can't remember. After you take the MCAT and you wanna look up at, especially particularly at the schools you're interested in, you wanna look at where, what the requirements or minimum or average MCAT score is for your kind of cohort of med schools that you're interested in applying to. And then uh, you're gonna take the MCAT. If you, don't do, if you don't succeed very well the first time, make sure you study extra hard and take it again. It does, look good if you take it again and to get a better score because it shows that you're motivated to succeed, you're motivated to improve yourself, and that you prove that you can do better, which is important. You want to get some volunteer experience under, I think it's just at this point, everyone volunteers, so if you don't volunteer, it probably doesn't look great. I don't think that volunteering makes you a rock star on your application, but I think it's just almost like everyone does it, you need to just do it. If you have any interesting talents, you're gonna to wanna to put that on your med school application or in your personal statement. So any kind of quirky things you can do, if you can juggle like 10 balls in the air, put it on there because interviewers love asking you about the little quirks and traits that you have. So for example, I put that I had built a computer from scratch and I put other things like the fact that I taught myself how to code and do web design in college and all that kind of stuff. So that just brings up a nice topic, top, talking point that you know otherwise people are just kind of get boring talking about the same things with applicants all over and over again and what you want to make sure well now so now you've you're applying you've you've done your personal statement you've taken your mcat you've submitted your application now you're going to wait for interviews and when you go on these interviews you want to make sure that you dress you know relatively conservatively this is not a field where dressing kind of crazy or stand out or wearing bright, super bright, unfortunately, super bright colors um, lends you any favors. So I would just plan on dressing as plain Jane as possible. That's a pantsuit for men and that's a pant, a skirt suit or a pantsuit like I wore for uh, women. So, you know, it's just, unfortunately, it's one of those things where creativity and fashion don't really play a, a beneficial role here when it comes to a med school interview. And you wanna just make sure that you don't interrupt your interviewer. You wanna make sure that you let them talk as long as possible because interviewers love to talk about themselves and and in the art of conversation, the more that someone talks about themselves or the, the longer someone kind of talks in the conversation, if you think about it, if you're a football fan, think about it as time of possession, it's more beneficial for the interviewer to have the longest time of possession rather than the interviewee. So you don't wanna overwhelm this person with talking and talking and talking and then they're just thinking in the back of their mind, man, this person won't shut up. 
So the more they talk about themselves is great. And the more you guys can find a common connection on something like, oh, you speak Spanish, I speak Spanish too. Or, you know, things like that, you know, I think that really, really lends itself to a good interview. And what they wanna know is, are you personable? Are, you know, at this point, you've gotten an interview, that means your application is good. It is good enough to gain admission to the medical school. Now you have to pass the interview to prove you're not a zombie, you are not uh, some sort of robot, you are not awkward, that you, you, you have this perception that you could probably have a pretty good bedside manner, that you are not faking things on it. So if, you, if you're dumber than a bag of rocks and you had someone else take all your tests for you, the interview is gonna show that, you know? Not that I've ever heard of that happening. But basically they wanna make sure, are you who you say you are? What is your personality like? And, you know, is that personality going to lend itself to becoming a doctor at, and training at this particular medical school? Then you go through, your, you gain admission to medical school. That's four years in the U.S. This is after a four-year college degree. So now, post high school, you're you're in medical school and you're basically finishing your four years post high school uh, education and then you are in four years of medical school. That's pretty much mandatory. Now in medical school you're going to be taking USMLE step exams, you're going to be taking shelf exams in your cl clinicals, and it really doesn't matter what you succeed in except I would say you want to do well in surgery on your surgery shelf exam, you want to do well in uh, pharmacology, get a good grade in pharmacology, biochem things like that and you want to start shadowing people or becoming part of a med student interest group so you want to join some interest groups I was the head of the SSA which was well, not head excuse me I was not the head <laughs> I don't know why I said that I was the I think the web chair for the student surgical association at my med school and I think the anesthesia interest group I was a member of that and so I attended all of these extracurricular activities related to the fields that I was interested in. And you want to kind of make yourself known to the department of the specialty you're interested in. So if that's anesthesiology, I, I met the vice chair, I met the program director, I kind of talked to them. I was like, okay, what, do, what are you guys looking for in a resident and all that kind of stuff. And then as I was shadowing and I did the anesthesia elective and I did very well on it, and it turns out as I graduated, upon graduation day, I, I had already um, gained admission to residency, but I had won the Outstanding Medical Student and Anesthesiology Award. And things like that really matter because, you know, you, you can put that on your resume, you can put that on your CV, you can put that on your residency application if you win any awards. I did research. Research is very important. Um, so you've done your four years of med school and then you've applied to residency and the residency is in the field of anesthesiology. So you're going to do the whole application process all over again. You're going to do interviews all over again. You're going to do a match all over again. And then you're going to gain admission to a residency program at a hospital that is connected to a medical school to learn how to become an anesthesiologist and anesthesia residency in the US is four years long. So now you've had four years of high school, four years of, of college with a degree, four years of medical school with a medical degree. You're a doctor, but you are not an anesthesiologist yet. It will take another four years of training where you become a specialist like myself in the field of anesthesiology. The first year is intern year, the next three years are clinical anesthesia years. You're gonna spend all your time in the OR and in lectures, and you're gonna be taking your exams, ITE or in, in training exams, I think is what they call them. It's a yearly exam while you're a resident. And you're gonna be taking the three-part anesthesia board certification process. And it used to be a one-part thing, and then they broke it out into two parts, which is what I took, and then now it's three parts which thankfully I was grandfathered into the two-part version because now there's this like MOCA sim training type element to board certification. So after you've done your four years of residency and you have passed your exams and you've passed your board exams, you are now officially a board certified anesthesiologist. And typically the board certification doesn't come until one or two years after you've graduated from residency, you've been in practice and you're training for the final step like oral boards um, of uh, anesthesia, anesthesi the field of anesthesiology. There's the written exam, which you take in your, I think your last year of 
yeah, last year of anesthesia residency and you hopefully pass that and then you get approved to take the oral board and then the MOCA sim training. And you are officially a board certified anesthesiologist. You've been in practice for a year or two and now you're officially board certified. So that is how you become an anesthesiologist in a nutshell. I hope this video wasn't too long, but I hope it's helpful and that hopefully if anybody has ever asked you that question or if you have ever found yourself wondering that or if you have any kids that are interested in the field of medicine, uh, you can send this video to them and that will hopefully help you out. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. I make videos weekly and I am a full-time anesthesiologist, a mom, a dog mom, a wife, and I am starting my own business. It's, it's gonna be a scrub line. So if you're at all interested in scrubs, you're gonna wanna follow me to check out the updates on that progress. And I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. <laughs>